Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is Dan Jurgen. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. The Krypton Report podcast is dedicated to all things Superman, Supergirl, and the planet Krypton. We discuss movies, TV, game, comics, and all things DC. So join me, Tyler, with my co-host James and Jania. It's February 2nd, 2022. It is 2 2 22. So with that date in mind, we thought, what better day would it be to talk about Two-Face? That's right. It's part of our countdown to the Batman, but also because of this really awesome, unique date, I want to talk about Two-Face. Two-Face being my favorite Batman villain. And who better to talk about Two-Face with me than my other half? So, welcome the lovely, the beautiful, arguably my better half, Jania. What's up, babe? What's up? So we're going to talk, this is a two-part series, and this is episode one. And what we decided to do for episode one, um, because Jania is not as steeped in all the comic knowledge was we're going to focus on Two-Face and other media. And then we'll do the second part, and that'll be with the comic book discussion. So, uh, just we'll give a, I'll give a little bit of background just about the character, and then the rest of that we'll dive in to on the second part. But Two-Face was created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Uh, <laughs> appeared in Detective Comics, 66, August of 1942. And I have always loved this character, um, the duality, the psychosis, uh, the fact that it is a good person wrestling with themselves. Um, Harvey's a very tragic, kind of fall from grace, tragic hero. Yep. Um... You know, the good and bad in every man. The duality. And I will also say, I don't think there's ever been a great Two-Face. I could see that. Um, I have issues, I think, with all of the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. And we'll, we'll dig into all that. But I feel like he's very much, like, we, we did our little research here. We're talking about stuff before we got on mic. And we looked at some of the animated representations, and a lot of them they play him very comical with the, you know, the coin flip or the two personalities, and I can see that, but that is a tragic way to live. It is, yeah. Um, and the fact that we also noticed how many things Two Face appears in as just a cameo. There are very few, like, major moments for him, it seems like. Right. Most famously, which we will be talking about more, um, probably is The Long Halloween. But even in that, it's not just a Two-Face story. Like, he's, he's very much prominent because that's his creation. Right. But, and, you know, not his original creation, but what a lot of people associate with him. And even then, like... It's not just him. Right. Um, He's never really had a that, lot of focus. That definitive story. Yeah. Or like that definitive representation. Um, so we'll start with live action. Okay? And we'll kind of go from there. Uh, first thing worth noting is that there were scripts that were produced for Batman 66. Two faces, I think, the only, or if not, there's only like one other... Major Batman villain that never appeared on Batman 66. Wow. There were uh, produced scripts. Uh, some of the ideas ended up in an animated film. And the others ended up in the 2015 comic book, Batman 66. Um, I was doing some This I did not know was that originally Clint Eastwood was going to be Two-Face on Batman 66. Oh, really? Wow. Um, I which, could see that. I could see that. You know, and then we'll skip ahead, but the animated Batman 
uh, versus Two Face, which is kind of the third Batman sixty six movie. Is they did the two animated films that kind of continue the Adam West era, and William Shatner did the voice of Two Face, mm. which I mean, thinking even the sixties, yeah, that works. Like I could have seen Shatner on Batman sixty six, the show, and playing Two Face. Yeah. Um. So that, that was a travesty. I always remember there was a character called False Face when I was little, and I didn't know if it was a different person or what uh, when I was a child. False Face, huh? Yeah. So now, this is an honorable mention, because there's not a whole lot to say, but in the first season of Gotham, in one episode, we get Assistant District Attorney Harvey Dent, played by Nicholas... Diag's not D, yeah, D Agosto, um, which I thought he was coolly cast, but he was way too old to be Harvey Dent in Gotham when Bruce is only like eight or twelve. Right. And then he's the only villain, the only major Batman villain to never really come back around in Gotham. Mm-hmm. By the end of the show, like everybody is there. In some shape or form, and they've gotten better costumes, but Two Face never came back. So, how old is he supposed to be in Gotham? Because honestly, okay, I might not be thinking, you know, along the lines of the comic books as much here, but I always kind of figured that Two Face was supposed to be, you know, a little bit older. Or if he was, it wasn't like a huge deal that he was. I always saw Two-Face, because I think maybe this is because they've changed things, as that kind of, um, he's about the same age as Bruce, he came from like a poor family, but because he was intelligent, he got a lot more opportunity, so he kind of went to school with some of like the richer kids, but he was the poor, rich kid who got picked on because he was poor. Well, it's kind of you like, know. you're you're thinking along the lines of maybe, like, the Two-Face that we have in, you know, the Batman um, Dark Knight storyline. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how I've always seen um, Two-Face, because there's there supposed to be a friendship between Bruce and, and Harvey. Harvey. But, it, but when you're an adult, I guess my viewpoint is, like, it, it, there doesn't have, you don't have to worry about age as much. Um, this is true. So if he's young enough here, and he does look like maybe he could pass for his 20s. Um, it's at least a 10 to 12 year gap between the two of them. Right, and looking at the fact that you are six and a half years older than I am. Um, we don't have to tell people that. I'm just, a young hot wife. <laughs> I'm just trying to say that it doesn't really matter, does it? Like, when you look at that. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> When you look at that, I'm just saying. No, it does because I think about friends I've had and stuff throughout time who are older than me. Dude, my best friend is significantly older than I am. Yeah, she's about to turn to dust. <laughs> if you can see my wife's face, you would know I'm about to get punched. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> You're freaking hilarious. I'm sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs> I'm just so I just wanted to throw that viewpoint out there, like to just kind of counter yours a little bit. Like I don't think he's. Like, significantly older, I feel like he is, you know, in that range where it could have worked. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, it could have. Because, I mean, if you think about it, too, um, a lot of times when you have Bruce and Harvey, like, Bruce, when he first sees Harvey, he really tends to, like, look up to him as, like, a good person. Um, at least we have that in the Dark Knight storyline where, you know, he he kind of idolizes him. And I'm sorry if I'm jumping around No, here. no, you're fine. Um, but I'm just trying to say, like, so if he's older than him, you know, that can even sell that point even more so. True. I mean, true. And then that fall from grace is that much harder. You know, I actually really like that. Thinking about it, like in a story, putting Harvey enough that he's more adult than Bruce, you know? Yeah. So that Bruce idolizes Harvey as like the man he could be or wish he could be from that like youthful perspective. 
And then that fall from her. Well, I mean, think about this. In Gotham, like, all of the crap that Bruce goes through and he experiences, if he has somebody that he can look up to that's in a position of power that's trying to do the best that he possibly can to bring justice, like, as as a child experiencing injustice and searching for justice... You know, he's going to grow up and he's going to look at that person like that. That person's not that much older than I am. So he's kind of cool and he's going to idolize him. And then as he turns into adult Bruce Wayne and into the Batman, you know, um, Harvey then becomes, you know, up on this pedestal for him. Like it could create a really good dynamic storyline. I'm just saying. I'm I'm. That was wonderful, but I'm editing all that out because no one's going to steal that idea from you. <laughs> You're I'm taking it. Like, um, yeah, my, you got the creative brain going. <laughs> I'm like, sorry. I just, I just, I, you said that and it just spurred me to think. Like, Hold that thought because that idea can tie awesome in my pitch that I have at the end of this. Okay. Um, so Two-Face. This is why he married me, by the way. It is totally. Um... Makes an appearance in Titans, portrayed by an unknown sto- stunt double in the f- in season one's finale, Dick Drayson, as part of Trigon's dream world. In season three, Jason makes an offhand comment about Two-Face murdering his father. We see the coin. Dent is mentioned in Batwoman as being the uncle of Duella Dent. So there's two Bat properties... So, what I was saying was, that's two bat-related properties that have just kind of brushed him off. Yeah. Like, uh, and I feel like that's kind of the respect he's getting. Uh, which takes us to Batman 89. Now, when I was a child, I didn't realize this. That Billy D. Williams was Harvey Dent. Like, the Harvey Dent would be Two-Face. But I didn't make the connection right away. Gotcha. And then... They go, he was contracted, they cut him out of Batman Returns, and kind of retooled and made the Max Shrek character. Gosh, yeah. Um, and then, when it came to do the third film, he was paid and bought out of his contract, but they brought Tommy Lee Jones to be Harvey Dent, be Two-Face. Wow. I wonder why they did that. So, um, and then right now, like... There's the Batman 89 comic that's going on, which shows the transition of the Billy D. Williams character into Two-Face. Yeah. And then Billy D. got to voice Two-Face in the Lego Batman movie, which was like, what, two lines, maybe? Three? Mm -hmm. But it was just kind of cute, because you're like, ah! So Tommy Lee Jones. You and I were watching some Batman Forever clips, and we are talking about that movie, because it holds a soft spot in my heart. And the yeah. first time we see him, when he's talking to the security guard, is probably the truest to his character in the entire film. Okay. Even though, in my mind, Two-Face doesn't flippantly, heh, see what I did there, flip his coin. Right. When he flips it, it's for a purpose. So, when... when, Because we just watched this scene, right? Mm -hmm. So, when we just watched this scene... It's been a long time since I've watched this movie, FYI, which is kind of a travesty. But, when we watched the scene, the first thing I thought of was, man, he's crazy. And, here's the thing. I... I feel like that would, uh, don't want to offend anybody out there, but I feel like Tommy Lee Jones' character um, takes it too far. Um, I think that there is a calculated, I don't know, controlled crazy that Two-Face has. His craziness is not outlandish. Right. It's not flamboyant. And there's a theory where people have talked about, and there's like document where everyone's like, oh, I'm being a Batman villain. They either A, looked at Batman 66, or B, they looked at Jack Nicholson. 
Oh, that's what he did. Okay. I mean, so as soon as I saw it, it reminded me of the Joker. Exactly. Everyone tried to do their version of, like, what Jack Nicholson did. Right. Instead but, of doing their version of the character. And then you... Tommy Lee Jones is a great actor. He, absolutely. His Two-Face... There's one scene where his Two-Face actually has a really great costume that I love. It's when they're robbing uh, the party later. It's my favorite Two-Face outfit he has in that movie. He changes his outfit way too much. Um, but then you think he should be more of the straight men. Okay, get, see what I did there? Yeah. Pluralized it because there's two of them. Because you have the over-the-top Jim Carrey as the Riddler. But no, he right. wanted to be over-the-top Two-Face. Yes. Because even when he plays the Harvey part, there's a couple scenes I can think of in the film where he goes, And me. And me. And then he does the part where he's like, You're right, Bruce. You've always been a good friend. Thank you. Which is more of his Harvey. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say this. There's one scene in that movie that I absolutely hate that is completely counter to the character. It's when they're inside Wayne Manor and Harvey sits down, Two-Face does, he flips his coin. Okay. He flips it, he sits there and he's getting upset. He flips it and finally the coin says he can shoot at Bruce. And Two-Face doesn't do that. He takes the coin as the absolute. He has lost the ability to discern his actions right from wrong and has to leave it to the chance of the coin. His psychosis... Requires that. Requires that. he Because that's the only... He is chaos theory. It's the only form of justice. It's the only thing that makes sense to him. It's what balances him. It's the randomness of the coin toss. Right. So whatever the coin comes up, he takes as absolute. Yeah. And that's what makes it an interesting character. Okay, now... So Tommy Lee Jones is... Two-Face was a sorry example of the character. Yeah. I mean, he's fun in the context of the movie, but then at the same time, that movie teeters so much on going down the road of Batman 66. I mean, aesthetically, he, like I said, not only are his actions flamboyant, but his costuming was extremely flamboyant. It's a Joel Schumacher movie. The purple face is off-putting. I agree. I cannot remember when they kind of did that in comic because I know originally he's green. That's the original appearance of Harvey Dent. Is his it's green, and then it's gone to a purplish. I don't know when. I don't know if it was pull four or after. But the was movie. it violet like that? Like super vibrant purple like that? No, but yeah, this is Joel Schumacher. I under, I understand. <laughs> I I get it. I get it. And but we're just reviewing here and talking about <laughs> what works and what doesn't. And I'm saying that doesn't work. It, it doesn't. He looks like a walking neon sign. He does. And not in a good way. Um, Certain characters, that'll work for, but not for him. Yeah. I was thinking of something, but not a big deal. But I just... It was cool because we got Two-Face. Yeah, Because we had never had a live-action Two-Face. And it's sad because, as I stated, there has never been a great Two-Face. So now we're going to jump ahead. Okay. To the Dark Knight. Yep. Aaron Eckhart. Great Harvey Day. First off, Aaron Eckhart is an amazing actor in anything that he does. So, um, yes, he is. In my opinion, and yes, great Harvey Dent. I agree. I'm gonna jump to my whole problem with Aaron Eckhart's Two Face. Two Face should have been the villain of the third movie. Yeah, absolutely. They should have the Dark Knight should have been it should have ended with Harvey in the hospital, and then. Two-Face was the next villain. Which would have made for a really great flick. Yeah. Because they cram the Two-Face story. That's why, I, that's why I say he's not great, is because his storyline just gets crammed in there. Well, yeah, because we already have so much with the Joker being in there. And let's be honest, Heath Ledger's Joker literally sh- out, it, sh- it outshines everything. Outshines everything. I don't even give a crap who Batman is at that point in time because you have Heath Ledger's Joker. You know what I mean? Yes. Like they could have gotten some Joe Schmo off the streets that didn't know what the heck he was doing, 
have have him do some Batman voice, and <laughs> that would have been fine because we had Heath Ledger as the Joker. So I'm um, yeah, I agree with you. Like you almost don't notice Harvey Dent because of that. And I didn't mind the whole change that was kind of because of the Joker and the thing and using the gasoline instead of acid. That worked for me. Absolutely. You know, that worked for me. They hit all the right beats. It made a little bit more sense realistically to have gasoline than uh, acid. I will have to say one of the things that I did love about the storyline was the tragedy. Um, Love and hate. I have a love-hate relationship with that because I hate seeing people get hurt. But... The the thought process behind him losing the love of his life in the way that he does, you know, and losing a sense of self in the way that he does. And he just plummets, you know. And then it's anger. It was almost like she was the buffer for his, his repressed anger, you know. Um, she really helped him, like, keep that in check. And then once she was gone, it was like... Here's all the anger I've been holding back on forever. Screw you all. You know? Yes. Exactly. And I was going to... Had they continued into the next... Into another film with two... They could have brought out some of the stuff that we'll touch on here in a minute. Um, Probably two scenes that really represent Two-Face in The Dark Knight. Now... I almost, like I said, if they would have just left him as Harvey Dent, I think the last shot we should have got of Harvey is when he's in the hospital and he has the mesh yeah, across his face where it's sinking in and it's just the half and it's like we are like, oh, he's going to become Two-Face. Yeah. You know, that should have been where it ended. But I didn't even mind the conversation between him and... The Joker? The Joker. That wouldn't have bothered me. Um, when he's in the car, and he flips the coin, and he looks at Maroon, he's like, I can't really lie. Dang it, I'm blanking. But then he goes, and then he flips it again, and he goes, too bad. He's like, for what? Your driver. And he shoots the driver. The idea, he flipped the coin. Maroney was safe. He couldn't kill Maroney, but he flipped it. He could kill the driver. Yeah. So he still was able to take out Maroney. And then the part at the end where he's holding, uh, you know, James Jr. And he flips it and he's, and he says, if you, it's really quick, but he flips and it was my turn when he's got the gun to his own head because he's flipping it for Harvey Dent yeah. to see if Harvey should be shot. Yeah. Um, that's true to character. That's true to the psychosis of the two um, personalities, the fact that Gosh. Um, he's going to do everything based on the coin. See, in the third movie, I wish that it would have been an unwinding, an undoing of his entire, like, mental map. Like, I wish we could have just seen that, like, completely be uncovered and unwound. Like, that would have been amazing to really get an in-depth experience with that and then see Bruce's, like, heartbreak through that situation, somebody that he idolized. Because they did show that in the the, uh, the Dark Knight is he did look up to Harvey. I believe in Harvey Dent, right? Mm-hmm. I tell that to Tyler all the time, by the way, guys. I'm always encouraging him, and I say, I believe in Tyler Patrick. I swear I'm going to get buttons made. Um, I would wear it all the time. I, I swear... Because people would be like, oh, who's that? Myself. Me. <laughs> um, so, I mean, sadly, that is our last live action Harvey Dent, Two Face. Yeah. Um, now, with the upcoming Pattinson film, if they were to do the character, what I want is I would love them to introduce Harvey Dent, have a whole film with him as Harvey Dent. Yeah. And then in another film, he becomes Two Face. Like, give me time to build this character, build the love, with that foreknowledge of where it's going to go, and not knowing when that's going to happen. I mean, that'd be great for a series, but for some reason they can't give us a real Batman series. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we're going to go to animation, and 
uh, <clears throat> this is probably the best version of Two Face. Is the DC animated Bruce Tam universe uh, voiced by Richard Mall from the Batman animated series? Heck yeah, that's my childhood right there. We got a two-parter, and in that we meet Harvey, the district attorney. We learned that he was seeing a psychologist and that he had anger issues and stuff that he had repressed from a traumatic experience as a child. He had a temper and he even called himself in his mind Big Bad Harv and that was like the the thick skin he had built inside of himself to protect himself right. from the experiences as a child. And then, you know, he's... he's um, engaged to Grace was the character's name and you know at the end of he's in the hospital we find out that the mob is using his psycho, his psychological profile against him yeah because they had stole the records and then there's an explosion and the explosion is what gives him the two faces does him in um, and then so we have that as the two-parter. And then Two-Face comes in a few other episodes um, here and there. But then we have the episode that later, that's probably a more interesting episode, is where a character named The Judge I remember this. is kidnapping villains and taking them out. And you find out The Judge is a third personality created by Two-Face to help him reconcile the other two. Yeah. And the final shot of the episode is him sitting in Arkham going, guilty. Guilty. And that is just tragic. Extremely. You know, someone who fought for the law, the law let down, and then completely um, loses everything he is. Um, Later, we get Harvey Dent in Batman the Brave and the Bold. Which was fun. That's a fun show. It's a different kind of show. Um, he has a green face on that one, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah. And that was enjoyable. Um, he appears in the background uh, let's see here and we so he's, he's a cameo in Teen Titans Go! series. Um he was in Beware the Batman voice by Christopher McDonald as the district attorney, but I don't think he ever became Two-Face. He just started down the path, but the show was canceled. Um, he wore the bandages to cover his face. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Um, he's in Justice League Action, voiced by Robert Picardo, and we watched that. That was fun. I mean... That was very humorous, but that's what that show was. Right, exactly. It's not meant to be serious. We're meant to just kind of be a little bit more lighthearted here. Um, just like Batman, Brave and Bold. He appears in the Harley Quinn series. But once again, that show is something else. <laughs> um, and then we saw like just cameos. He appeared in a bunch of other animated properties. And what really struck me as, and I don't, I'm mad at myself for not catching this. Okay. But when we did our big review, was it in 2020, of the whole connected uh, continuity animated films, and we were going through each film and discussing it, I did not realize that Two-Face was never in them, other than that one quick cameo shot we saw. Wow. And, I, and like I told you as we were doing this, I'm like, wow, he's been completely underserved. Kind of a shunned character. He's had some good highlights in, like, the, uh, and we're not talking about this, but in, in like, some of the Arkham games and stuff. Like, we're getting I, there. I, I really, yeah, that's been kind of positive, um, but, you know, as far as movies and animation and, and even maybe even animated movies, like, he's just, he is shunned a lot. He, um, you know, we don't get to see him fully develop and my god there's so much you could do with that character it is a good foundation especially if you talk about the relationship between him and bruce so just saying like kind of like tommy elliott and um 
in some ways. Like, you could do something along those lines. Um, but if you almost, instead of a childhood friend, like we talked earlier and had him as, like, a mentor. Um, I don't know. I'm just saying. No, you're completely on, on point because um, the next big two-faced thing, like, I'm just looking here at a list of things. Like, he's been in a lot if you just were to see the character, but just in the background. Right. Um, the next big two-faced thing was the Harvey Dent and Batman versus Two-Face with voiced by William Shatner. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a really good representation of the character within the context of Batman 66. Right. So it's a little can't be an outlandish but it's, it's a good version um but it just it's not it's not what, not what we deserve for. I mean which brings us to um most recently was Batman the Long Halloween which is the best animated second to the animated series Harvey Dent we've received with Josh De- Demel yep. or Duhamel, however you pronounce it, I've heard it both ways, uh, being Harvey Dent. Because he's actually an actor that I could see play the role live as well as the voice actor. Uh, absolutely, and I would pay money to see that. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. because I think he would do that very well. He's somebody that has, like, the boy next door, like. He has the that, look, the charm. Right, but then he could also. You could also see him flipping the switch in a heartbeat and. You know, being and you know uh, somebody dark, uh, he has that maniacal feel to him as well. He is very dual, um, and he's a good actor. And I could I could see that. I I wish we would see that actually. Um, just saying, but yeah, I agree with you. Like that, uh, the long Halloween with him as Harvey Dent. Um, he plays the tragedy. Well, you hear it in his voice when he speaks. Yes. Especially, I mean, we get the first movie, which I really can't wait till they put it out this year as one film, and I'm going to buy it on physical. I'm going to buy the 4K version so I can watch all of it one. Yeah. Because I think you'll, we'll get something more out of it. Seeing it. Just the story. Straight. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. But... You know, as of right now, you get one movie of Harvey Dent. And the second movie starts, he's still Harvey Dent, but he's slipping. Yeah. And he starts to, the, the two-faced starts mind, the big bad heart, whatever you want to call it, starts to build in his mind before the scars. Yeah. Because that's the breaking point. And then, like Jania mentioned, another big place for Two-Face has been the Arkham games. He's in all of the Arkham games. Uh, he's a prominent player. He looks great. His his look oh, and yeah. imagery. Oh, yeah, looks fantastic. And then, uh, also, um, it's sad that he's a non-playable character in the Injustice games, because I would love to be Two-Face, but he... Plays a great role in the first season of the Batman Telltale series, which Solomon and I were playing the other day. Because it starts off where he is Harvey Dent. He is... Um, and he doesn't become Two-Faced till one of the other seasons. Um, so we actually get Harvey. So it's, it's really nice to see when the character actually gets to breathe... As the character. For sure. Now, pitch time. Okay. So, this is a, a breaking news, but I guess they're planned to start filming in 2023 a sequel to Todd Phillips' Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, wow. Okay. And my pitch is, the sequel shouldn't be about the Joker. It should be another character. How awesome would it be to do a two face movie... Like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type story in the vein of Joker. Okay. Yeah. So another villain. And if you wanted to, it could be the sequel to Joker because you could have Harvey interact with um, Arthur. 
as like he's prosecuting and you have like you just stated there's Bruce Wayne who was in that movie that Bruce Wayne could meet Harvey Dent and then have this idolization of this man who's going to bring uh, the person responsible for the massacre that killed his parents to justice right but then you then you get to explore the psychosis of someone coming unwound yep so as the movie goes on you ha- you start having the duality and the inability Harvey starts having struggles with choices with what should I do what I mean just even little things you could slip in like getting dressed not being able to choose simple things like what do you want to drink like his mind starts to break down to where you could even have that his wife helps him with a lot of stuff where she lays out his clothes all the simple stuff that he doesn't have time to focus on and then something happens to her what I love about what you're saying is kind of what I was thinking earlier when we were talking about Josh Demel's, um, and I'm saying Demel, um, what his version of uh, Two Face, crazy, doesn't happen overnight. Going insane, going down that that rabbit hole of the mind, it doesn't happen overnight. It is something that is created, and it begins with the small stuff. And what happens is something within. And, and of course, I'm not a psychologist, so or a, like I just I'm just going off of what my experiences have been around different people. But we all go a little mad sometimes. We do. We all go a little mad sometimes. But what I'm trying to say is that basically, it takes. It takes a situation that happens or just a wearing down over time for us to fall into the madness. It's it's never going to be something that's like, oh, and now he's crazy, you know, but seeing this person deteriorate, seeing them and their weaknesses becoming highlighted as time goes on, you know, is real. Seeing a man who desires absolute who desires black and white, right and wrong, and strives for that, and built his foundation on that, but then seeing that he rode to where he has, he starts questioning everything. Yeah. To where he doesn't know what to do because he's living in the grave. That's not how he was wired or he grew or whatever to where he just starts coming unraveled because he cannot function and thus the coin see taking away his freedom of choice because he has to be told what to do what scares me about this is as we're talking about two-face it's like i see why you like him so much tyler um would somebody please send someone to come and help me (laughs) i'm just saying he's a great character yeah, somebody that you very deeply understand, huh? Yes. I I'm not gonna die, so. I'm not gonna crack. <laughs> <laughs> you <Okay>. are. Hey. <laughs> <Yeah, I know. laughs> Just right. freaking play. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Two face. <laughs> right. What's funny is okay. I'm going to bring in some of my personal stuff here, okay? Um, astrologically, yes, I'm one of those. Um, astrologically, you're looking at it, he's very Gemini energy. So he's very that dual energy and the thing that we struggle with inside of us at all times. Um, you know, the duality of self. Tyler is a Gemini rising as the dark night rises. What? Yeah. Right. I'm trying to see because sometimes in in the writings they'll give characters birthdays. I'm curious. I would be interested to see if he is. That's what, that I'm would lo- be kind of cool. I'm looking up to see if it's ever been given in a comic. You know, yeah. What zodiac sign? <laughs> I mean, they're going to say Gemini probably. That's right. It'll be called the Gemini. That's a little that thing you do reference for those who don't know. (laughs) 
<laughs> so. Yeah. This is where you can go to the bathroom or get some popcorn while uh, she needs to search things. But I, I really, all these ideas that we've come up with, I think would be great is if we could incorporate that in some sort of Batman series, film, TV. Um, it's just a character that I would love to see the tragedy brought to life and get that fall from grace, get get that that longing, that misunderstanding that part of him desires to be good again, but part of him searches to make sense especially when you look at the city of Gotham you know and I mean how easily is Bruce Wayne able to identify with Two-Face when Bruce himself has two personalities Bruce Wayne and Batman yeah but Bruce's is more two identities and not personalities you know Two-Face is two different people basically see what's cool about Batman um, is the fact that he actually identifies with every villain that he comes into contact with. Every villain that is stuck around that's really a major player is a representation of some form of the character. Yep. You got the Joker, you know. You can obviously see that. The Riddler and the detective work and the, and the mind, how it goes that way. and Yeah, all of that makes complete sense. Penguin is often used to represent the aristocrat that right. Bruce could have been. Right. The rich overlords, so to speak. Yeah. And so I can see where Two-Face would be the duality that's inside of Batman and the, where he's trying to ride the line, if the, you will. You know, the, the desire for justice, but then at the same time, vengeance because... Justice isn't always served, and serving your own justice. And that's why Batman's code means so much. That's why it matters. That's why he can't kill people, is because then he becomes exactly like the people that he's trying to stop. And by the way, he is an Aries, not mm. a Gemini. Mm. Which makes sense, too, because Aries energy is very fiery and full of their own type of chaos. Here's something interesting. As I'm doing some quick research, Joel Schumacher noted in a DVD commentary for Batman Forever that he, his mind, Two-Face survived the fall. Okay. Because his plan for Batman 5, which would have been either Batman Triumphant or Batman Unchained, was going to have a courtroom scene with Batman facing all of his villains. And he was going to have Two-Face there. Gotcha. Um, Which, okay, in theory, that would have been quite monumental. Um, but with that storyline in those movies, I don't think so as much. Just side note between you and I. Oh, this is also interesting. Rick Baker d did the prosthetic makeup for Tommy Lee Jones' Two-Face. Um... There was originally a more in-depth uh, makeup for Two-Face. Once again, it's the color for me. I don't mind the distortion of the face or anything like that. It was the color. But then we go to Harvey Dent and um, Aaron Eckhart, you know, being Harvey Dent, and um, his Two-Face, and I understand the thought process behind it, and I also understand that there was no healing time, but it just kind of feels like for me personally, like, too much was gone. We, you, you might as well have been just the skull. Mm. Yeah, I, so... To me, there could have been a... Maybe a little bit better way to... Um, the scars. Make and... Yeah, scar it up. Make it still pretty intense without making it seem like he should be dead. So my question is, what should it look like? Because we talked about this, that Aaron Eckhart's very much like charcoal flesh. We've had blue. We've had green. We've had this purple. I don't want like the idea of, like, rotting flesh. No. Like, it's supposed to be more like muscle look. Like, 
as if like the skin's back and it's just exposed muscle. So what should Two Face's face look like? That's where everybody can chime in and just start sending us messages, especially just start messaging Jania and tell her what you think of Two Face. Be like, hey. Well, I mean, let's see here. There's a lot of melting involved. Mm hmm. You know, a melting of the skin. Not so much, and of course, I, I'm not a burn victim, and I, I wouldn't know from firsthand here, but just kind of looking at people in their face um, when they've been burned, um, it's more about things have been melted off. I definitely don't think it should be a perfectly straight line. <laughs> it's okay to be a little crooked. Oh, absolutely. The perfectly straight line just... Yeah. It, it once again, makes it seem like it's very unrealistic. But alright, Jew. I think we about beat this dead horse. Any final thoughts? Um, I really hope that we get, like, a decent... Um, Harvey Dent in the future, something that, you know, is more representative of the tragedy of the character. Um, once again, I don't think we've had bad representations. Uh, I just feel like there's a lot that could have been done. Um, we just had great. Hey, you know what? You know what's a really good interpretation of a burnt face and what that should look like? Look at Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, I can see that. You know, um, like I said, I feel like they took it just a little too far with Aaron Eckhart. Um, but that's my own two cents there. It, it was a little bit more, like, horror movie than I, I would have personally liked. And maybe you guys know more about the comics and you can, you know, comment on that and let us know, like, how you feel about that subject. But, um, I'm not as fluent with the comics, so maybe there is more detailed, uh, you know, burden face somewhere in there. Um, I definitely don't think it should be, what is it, what color is it in, um, Batman animated series? Blue. Blue. It, but it's like a aqua blue. Yeah. Which, where does that come from? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they just needed something. Vibrant? They, yeah, they needed some sort of distinctive color. Um, and, you know, think about a lot of times in animation and sci-fi or whatever, like, doing weird colors helps with sensors. So by doing blue, it's technically not, like, skin. Yeah. So they don't have to, like, worry about it being too grotesque or anything. Just, like, why do aliens always bleed green or and stuff like that because it's not actual blood. Right, exactly. They can get away with a lot more that way. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I love Two-Face. I think he's an amazing character. There's a beautiful duality there and there's a really tragic story. I wish that they would do something about you know, um, Bruce Wayne looking up to him and you know, diving further into that kind of a vibe. I think it would be really cool and that fall from grace be a lot more dramatic so. And remember. I want to invite you to check out the Krypton Report Patreon. For $1 a month, you can hear exclusive content. Uh, we have discussions on movies or other comics or stuff that's going on in pop culture. We have guest appearances and we have plenty of fun times. We also have movie commentaries that we like to do. It's one of our favorite things to do. So check that out. It's just $1 a month. It's chump change, you know. It just helps us keep the podcast going. We're not here to make, you know, money off and get rich. We just, it's just nice to have a little help, you know, to pay the bills here. 
So $1 a month, come join us on our Patreon, Krypton Report, patreon.com. And if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. If you're enjoying this podcast, here's some of our favorite podcasts to check out. Digging for Kryptonite, The Aspiring Kryptonian, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Geek of Steel, The All-Star Super Fan Podcast, It All Comes Back to Superman, and Superboy Legacy, Supergirl Radio, and of course, Always Hold On to Smallville. Check all those out, enjoy those supercasts, and remember, keep listening. The Krypton Report is a Tears production. We thank you for listening and enjoying, and please support us on our Patreon account, our T Public store, and check out our social media. Always remember to look up in the sky.